If you're currently struggling with your salah, your namaz, your prayer, whatever you want to call it, uh, this video will definitely help you. Bi'idhnillah. Uh, so please, 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 like just be patient with this video. If you've ever watched any of my videos, if you've never watched any of my videos to the end of the video, I recommend that this be the video that you start from. Uh, and this is not because of watch time. This is not because that this gives more views. Uh, honest to God, if one person really benefits from this, uh, this will change my entire life. It will change the course of my my uh, Jannah levels, it will change the course of my, my, my status in paradise because I would be able to get the reward uh, for all of those who benefited from this video. So I honest to God, I'm earnestly pleading with you that if you are someone who struggles with your prayers, right, this is the video for you. I think it will be easily one of the best videos on YouTube that you would probably want to recommend with people or uh, share with others right now. And by the way, this is this is not me recording the intro for the video. This is me telling you right now as we jump into the video as to why. Way of Life SQ, keeping it a hundred. Um, I want to say some harsh truths with you guys. If you're struggling with your prayers, uh, I'm going to tell you just some harsh truths that you probably won't like to hear, especially if I'm a person like me in a panda suit with like, you know, these fuzzy socks that I'm wearing right now. Okay, cool. Um, here's the harsh truth that we only do things that we find value in. Uh, if you are not praying right now, it means that you don't find value in your salah. I know that hurts to hear out loud, uh, but it has to be said to you because uh, this video is going to be sort of like a reality check for you, okay? Uh, you only pay mind to that which gives you value, okay? Uh, if you're getting something in return, you give it value, you know? So that's why whenever you have like a big exam or something on the line you tend to pray because you find value that this prayer will give me value in return for what I really need so we end up treating Allah his his prayer towards him as like a little ATM that when we need something beep, boop, 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 beep, wait get your money and then you walk away from it right and some of you lose the trust in the process of salah when you did exactly that and you didn't get value for it so now all of a sudden you're questioning your iman your belief like is this prayer even thing i prayed to allah allah didn't give me anything okay uh we're gonna get into this in this video right now um and i want to let you know something and i want to help first establish the value of a salah right i want to tell you about the value of your salah first and foremost you have to remember that your salah your prayer, your namaz is a gift from Allah. It's a gift. It is a resource that Allah Azza wa Jal gave for human beings. Not to every human being, even though they had their own versions of prayer. This was a gift given to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the seventh heavens. This was a gift given to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay? I want to give you an example right now. When you and I maybe travel, I'm from Pakistan, alhamdulillah, right? When I travel to Pakistan, I usually bring gifts from America over there, right? They expect them. These guys, they be ordering crazy things. They think I'm made out of money, all right? I'm not made out of money, all right? But you know how it be. But they just, they don't care. They just want gifts. Okay, cool. When you travel from one country or part or an area that is exclusive, that the other person isn't really used to, you tend to bring gifts over there. And vice versa, when I go to Pakistan, I come back with some stuff, right? Like I usually get the the, the spotty and the and the hum thum, and I love the spotty yum, but it's not good for your teeth. It makes your teeth yellow. You shouldn't be eating them, but I love them, right? I usually bring gifts back, okay? When the Messenger Salsa was invited on this beautiful journey of Isratul wa Miraj, right? When he was invited to the seventh heavens, okay? When the Messenger Salsa went, to meet Allah Azza wa Jal. He didn't expect to. He didn't go to sleep expect like this just happened, okay? When the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had to come back and tell his people about his amazing journey that tested the people's iman, and this is the belief that gave uh, Abu Bakr as Siddiq the title of as Siddiq because he believed the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when no one else believed him. Really? You went to all the way to Jerusalem and came back overnight, and then you meet Allah. Come on, they're laughing at the man. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought, the story in itself was enough. The story, the miracle, the, the experience about it was enough. But the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came back with something. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came back with a salah. That was a gift given by Allah for you. And me. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not send the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam back empty handed. He gave him a gift. And that's the gift that you're neglecting. That's the gift that I'm neglecting. Come on. Come on. It's not worth it, man. So when I say that you're not valuing a salah, you're not valuing the gift that Allah Azza wa Jal gave to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at home. Come on now. Okay. That's the value. That's what you're missing. Okay. So when the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes back, he comes back with this miracle, this miraculous gift of a salah. Okay, good. And that's the gift that Allah Azza wa Jal gave for the Ummah to the people. And a salah, the salah, the namaz, the prayer, whatever you would like to call it, is the believer's weapon. Like a dua, like a dua. This is the painkiller. My friend was playing PUBG like for 12 hours straight. He was in some tournament. I was just watching him, right? And I realized that every time, if you know those games like Call of Duty, COD, or PUBG, or even Fortnite, right? There's times when you get shot and you, you take these things called painkillers or heals, right? For us... Believers, the heels is a salah. That's our heels. That's our painkiller. That's our, you know, energy drink that you drink in PUBG or COD or whatever, right? I mean, like those are the heels that we have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a heel and that's a salah, right? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a weapon called a dua, right? The dua is a weapon. Okay, go ahead. Let's, let's, let's continue with this, these analogies for a second. Inshallah, this is helping. I told you. I told you. If you are someone who's struggling with your prayers, this is it. This is the video, inshallah, that could turn it around for you. And honest to God, it's not about the views. It's not about how many people watch it. I don't even look at those statistics anymore. I just post now. I was so worried about what would I call the name of this video. I don't even know what to call it. I honestly, I don't even. I'm gonna probably call it something basic, and it's probably gonna get no views, and maybe uh, the 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 thumbnails aren't even gonna be that good, and maybe not gonna see it. But wallahi, one of you guys is gonna see it, just one, and it's gonna change my life forever. That's why I'm doing this video. This this Allah is my witness about the sincerity that I have for this video. It's for that one person, that one person who needs this video. Okay. When a person's on their deathbed. Everyone's gathered around someone's deathbed. You would imagine that the words that come out of the person's mouth are the most sincere. It's the most serious. You want to listen to them. People usually on their deathbed give like their wills. Like, you know, I want, if they don't have a will right now, I want my wealth to go to them and I want this to do that. And you listen to them. It's their last rites, their last requests. The messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wallahi, I hope you're saying sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I hope you're saying in your house, when I'm saying sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you're saying it too. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is on his deathbed. He's not asking about his family, his wives, about... His first concern is a salah. He repeats it three times. He's on his death. He's in the pangs of death, pangs of sickness, in and out of consciousness. And he's asking, a salah, a salah, a salah. Why? 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 Because he knows that's the most important thing for you and I. The most important thing for you and I. It's our foundation. It's not just a pillar. It's the foundation to our faith. A salah. The messenger saw someone's on his deathbed and he's worried about us. He's worried about you because we don't know how important the salah is. Like, I could say it all I want to you. I could tell you about how on the day of judgment, you know, the first question we get asked is a salah. I can tell you about this and you've heard of it before. But wallahi, we don't understand what the day of judgment is going to look like. We just don't. I don't care how many descriptive imagery and all that sort of stuff we have from the best of speakers to tell you how the day of judgment is going to look. Wallahi, on that day, Things won't make sense. On that day, you're going to be like, you know, the, 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 the sciences are out the window. The gravity, like all the natural things that we know of life doesn't make sense anymore. To a degree, a baby, a baby's hair will turn gray. Can you believe that? A baby's hair will turn gray on that day. The sun will be on top of you. But then you're sweating. The, the, the laws of gravity and physics and all that don't even apply on that day. That day is going to be so chaotic that you and I have no understanding. And on that day of all the craziness we've done in our lives, the first question Allah Azza wa Jalla is asking us is about our salah. Okay. 
the Messenger Sallallahu is so concerned for us that he knows that the key is your Salah. Okay. I'm not going to be here telling you, oh, if you leave your Salah, you're a disbeliever, you're doing Kufr, you're doing that. Because let me tell you why. You already feel bad for not praying your Salah. Isn't that true? Don't you feel guilty when you don't pray your Salah? So how the hell do I look coming over here and saying, oh, the difference between the non-believers and the believers and the hypocrites is the Salah. You know that already. You already feel like trash for not praying. So how I look doing that to you? But I would rather uplift you and let you know that you're missing out. When you're not praying your Salah, you're missing out. You're missing out on something major. You're missing out on the heels. You're missing out on the, on, on the painkiller. You're missing out on healing yourself when you're not praying your Salah. You're doing yourself a disservice. You're doing yourself a disservice. Honest to God, you're just, and I, I can't force you, but you're doing yourself a disservice. Okay. So we talked about, I, I hope by now you have some value of what the Salah is. I hope, I hope I'm, you know, giving off a good uh, impression over here about what that's supposed to mean. I, I, I honestly don't know until uh, until post because I don't do edits anymore. Uh, I, I write my ideas in my head more than I do on the paper anymore. Now I just let them flow. If you're someone, but you're like, SQ, you know what, SQ? I, I'm of that mi mindset that it's all or nothing. There's a lot of people out there who are of this mindset, all or nothing, SQ. Either I pray all five, I do none of them. When has that ever applied to anything else in life? Like, tell me one, tell me one situation where that has applied to anywhere else in life, right? Let's suppose you're driving on the motorway or the motorway or the highway or some type of freeway or something like that, and you miss your exit that you're supposed to get off of. You're like, you know what? Now that I missed this exit, I'm gonna just keep driving. When did that ever happen? When does that ever happen? I missed lunch. You know what that means? I'm not gonna eat ever again. Simple as that. I'm not going to eat until tomorrow, until I try again. You know what? I miss breakfast. It's over for me now. I'm, when did this logical reason ever apply? Look how stupid it sounds. And that's how you know it's really from the shaitan. Causing you to miss your prayers is really from the devil. Making you think that it's all or nothing. Oh, I can't pray five, so I can't pray one. I'm not praying any at all. Let me tell you something. You pray one prayer might be that seed of establishment of iman and goodness in your heart that you need to start praying the second prayer then the third prayer, then the fourth, then the fifth. And then who knows, you're praying Qiyam at night. Who knows, you're praying Tahajjit. Who knows where this could take you. But you won't know until you try. What are you afraid of? Let's talk about the real thing stopping you. The real thing. And that is the fear. What are you afraid of? Are you afraid of that people are going to be like, Oh, watch out. Oh, Molvi Saab. Namazi ho gaya. Namazi. Oi, oi, oi. Oh, kya hua? Oi, Eid hai. Oh, kya hua? Oh, tab 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 you're telling me you are afraid of getting mocked? That's the reason you're not going to pray? You're not going to pray to the one who made you because you're afraid of getting mocked? Honestly, you deserve to be mocked. If that's the case, you deserve to be mocked. You do. You deserve to be called a lot of other things besides just a mulvi. And, and so, what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? Because that's the reason that you're really stopping yourself. Is it your, is it your sins? Is it your sins that are holding you back away from, from your salah? What sin is holding you back? What sin is holding you back? Hmm? Did you know that the Messenger Sallallahu has taught us, right? And, and someone confirmed this in the comment section below. I heard this one. I haven't confirmed it, but I confirmed it from a good source. So I assume it's correct. But maybe one of you might be like, SQ, that's uh, uh, not authentic or that's a weak hadith. Tell me in the comment section below. No problem. I'm not afraid to learn. I'm not afraid to learn. I'm not here to tell you right now. I'm not afraid to not take my hat off. I'm not. I'm not no scholar. I'm not afraid to take my hat off. I'm not, I'm not a scholar. I'm not afraid. There are people. Ask. I'm not going to say someone's name, but ask them to take the hat off. They won't. They won't. They're insecure. And these are the people you follow. Insecure people. Insecure. Imagine the fact that they're hiding their head from you. What else are they hiding from you? May Allah forgive us. Who am I? SQ is hiding a lot of things from you too. It's Allah's mercy. He's covered me from my sins too. Wallahi. I'm putting it back on because my head is cold though. <laughs> my head is cold though. <laughs> Wallahi, I hope that some of you laugh at home when you watch my videos. I really hope that some of you are like laughing, like cracking up. Your SQ, you're bad funny, bro. MashaAllah. Got my hat back on. Okay. I love my hat. Okay, MashaAllah. Messenger Salsam has taught us and confirmed it, right? That when you are in your salah and you're praying in congregation, and if you were to catch the Amin with the Imam and the congregation and the angels who are praying salah with you, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you of your sins. So I've heard. I believe that unless you tell me in the comment section below, right? 
It's interesting. Let's assume it is a correct hadith, right? Let's assume that, right? I don't know, but I'm assuming it is, right? Let's assume it is, right? Look how the shaitan makes you feel like, like trash. I was going to say another word with an S, right? Makes you feel like trash and makes you run away from the salah. But Allah is like, no, 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 no. If you catch the ameen in that salah, that sin that you want to run away from will be removed from you. Let me give you an authentic hadith that I know for sure. That when the believer makes wudu, and the water drips off from their hands, the sins that their hands have committed are going away. The sins that your eyes have committed are going away and the water is falling off your face, your speech, your tongue, your feet. You drove somewhere, you walked somewhere to do some haram. Well, when you did the washing of your feet, when you do the ghusl, when you do it for the sake of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with each drop that's coming off, your sins are falling off of you. So what excuse do you have not to pray? Hmm? Is it indeed not from the shaitan? But now that you know it's from the shaitan, now that you know that you're making excuses, the real question is, what are you going to do about it? That's the real question. Because you could sit here and watch all these videos today. After this, you're going to get recommended some other video. And then some other video, and some other video. Are you just going to sit here and watch videos all day? Or are you going to get up from your, your, your ASS and go make wudu and pray. That's the real question. Because if my video can't do that for you, I've failed. If my video cannot cause you, if my speech, my, 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 my direct approach to you cannot cause you to turn off whatever platform you're watching this video on right now and to go make wudu and pray, then I have failed. I have failed. But I could promise you, some of you are watching this video right now, have shut it off, paused it, and you've made wudu and you've prayed. And I'm proud of you because you're someone who does. My videos are designed for those who do, not who think too much. Don't think too much. Do more. Do more. Do more. Get up. Go pray. Do what you have to do. You missed a prayer? Go make it up. Stop thinking like a loser. Go make it up. Allah has given you an opportunity. Go make it up. If you're someone struggling with your prayers, ask you, I could only pray uh, Dhuhr and Asr, but I miss every other prayer. Okay, pray Dhuhr and Asr. Combine your prayers a little bit more. Read the Qasr prayers for the ones that you've missed uh, or from that day, not from, from your whole lifetime, from that day. Do something though. Who knows that the start of that one or two prayers is your journey into where you're going to end up. Wallahi, you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. So why don't you try to learn a little bit more about yourself? What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of praying? You've done too many sins. Allah, I'm giving you, I'm giving you evidence that Allah doesn't care about that. He just wants you to pray. So the real question is, what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of that's stopping you from praying? Because it's not like you don't know how to pray. You could YouTube that. It's not like you don't know how to make one. You could YouTube that. There's something else that's stopping you from prayer. And I promise you, until you don't really deep dive and really become self-reflective within yourself and asking yourself, why am I not praying? Habibi, you will never heal and you will never start praying. Believe me, you won't. You got to get down to the problem of it. And that problem and the question is, what am I afraid of? Ask that question to yourself. What am I afraid of? Some people are afraid of actually drawing closest to Allah. Some people are afraid of actually becoming pious. Some people are afraid of actually praying because that prayer means I have to stop all my bad habits. I get it. It's scary. It's scary. There's, there's pressures to that. That's a, that's a real concern that you can have. I don't think you should have it, but you have it. That's a real concern, but I'm here letting you know that you have no excuse not to pray. You have no excuse not to pray. You know what I mean? Like, you're, you're literally stopping and stunting your own growth uh, from praying. But your boy SQ can't convince you. Uh, I, can't, I can't do anything for you, to you, to do this. I'm not going to even do any clips and putting it in the front of the video. I'm going to just leave it exactly the way it is right now. All the way until I shut down the video like this and turn off the, uh, the recording. Because I want to let you know that when it comes down to a person who wants to help you out, I'm not saying that other people don't want to help you out. I'm saying that I want to help you out a lot more than they do. And that's no disrespect to them. There's no, and this is not a time for me to start praising myself. The reason I respond to comments and everything like that because I know I'm going to find a comment that I can actually respond to that will give someone value. I'm looking for comments. I respond to all of them. But I'm looking for comments because I know I'm going to be able to help someone out. I do this full time. I'm full time on this. I don't get paid. You think you get money? Maybe that's a good video. Tell me in the comment section below. My YouTube analytics. How much money I make on YouTube? Yeah? Okay. Yeah? Is that, is that you nodding? Hey, you at home. Are you nodding? Are you feeling sad? Are you feeling bad about yourself? Then come on down to Way of Life SQ's YouTube page where there's content for every person here. You need some... 
uh, marriage counseling content. I got some of that. You need some iman boosting content. I got some of that. You need some entertaining content. I got some of that. I got everything that you need. Just pick what you want. Pick what you want, guys. I am here for you. And I pray. I'm so loud right now. My neighbors are going to be like, who the hell is this? I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you spread this video far and wide. Far and wide because I know that this can help people out. The raw emotion, the, the, the bravado, the, the funny, whatever it is, this video has it all to help someone who is struggling with their salah. With your permission and your help, Allah. With your permission and your help. Not because I'm amazing or great. It's because you've given me a gift and a talent. And Allah, I only submit to you, Allah. I only use this gift to, to promote your deen. To, and I pray, Allah, that I'm one of the reasons and vessels that you help make this deen successful and, and bring Islam into every single household. Allah, I want nothing more but your pleasure, Allah. Please forgive me, Allah. Ya Allah, please forgive me. Please forgive me for all that I've done, Ya Allah. Forgive me, Ya Allah. Forgive me, Ya Allah. Check out some of my other videos over here and all that good stuff. I think I'm going to start a Patreon soon. Just so a lot of you guys are asking how you can support and help. But nonetheless, guys, I love you all for the sake of Allah. Uh, sorry if this video got a little too long and crazy all over the place emotionally. But sometimes you got to be real with yourself. Is there something I'm at? No, it's not. Uh, I love you all for the sake of Allah. And until next time, I'm out. <laughs>